which was around the egg, no more like a millstone, a plumbing stone, by God. Damn them all. Hey everyone, welcome to a special bonus episode of uh, The Dark Parade. I almost forgot the show that I do. And uh, this is, of course, Heart of Horror. And uh, fortunately, I am not alone. And with nope. me, as ever, the the lovely, the talented, the ethereal, the pixie-ish? <laughs> so, <laughs> impish. Yeah, the impish. Kate Pollock. Uh, <laughs> Puck, yeah, like a, a Shakespearean puckish yeah. nature. Being that I am from, from England and whatnot. Yeah, blame not this gentle puck. Mm -hmm. Is that the line? Maybe. I don't know. I make a lot I of know. stuff up. I, know. I haven't done it since I was like 17, so yeah. a long time ago. <laughs> I, I remember a little bit of a couple of monologues, and I, I remember most of one sonnet. Wow. I remember the general plot, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I Sonnet 112 is the one I remember, because it's... It's a panty dropper. Uh, oh, care to recite? Yeah, uh, it's let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love's not love which alters when alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove. It is an uh, love what it is uh, the star to every wandering bark whose worse unknown although his height be taken. I'm getting this all out of order now. But but oh, the so last that's couplet, very impressive, very the, impressive. The last couplet though is, uh, if this be error and upon me proved, I never writ nor no man ever loved. Ah, yeah. I do love how you rush through it though to make it as non sexy as possible. Like, right. Well, I didn't. Like... I mean, you don't want our, our listeners to be like you know hashtag moist before they've even begun. <laughs> hashtag moist is uh that's gonna just be part of the show from now on but it's part of my other show as well and i enjoy it i enjoy it a lot <laughs> yeah well you know you don't want to you don't want to start with a showstopper no no you don't no because then the show stops and right people switch off so uh and also this yeah. is all about bad love this episode yes it is and so i didn't want to start with like i didn't want to get all flowery and romantic no but i do have a story about uh about Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> oh, please. Um, so I studied it in theatre at college because, of course, I'm a drama kid. Mm -hmm. um, I said this to someone at work actually the other day, and she was just like, of course you're a drama kid. You didn't even have to tell me. You just reek of it. I was like, thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so we did Midsummer Night's Dream, and we did that scene where um, fucking, ah, oh, fuck me. What's the, what's the fucking donkey guy called? Caliban? No, the fucking guy gets turned into a fucking donkey. Oh, uh, keep going, I'll tell you. Ah, oh, fuck, I can't remember. Um, anyway, that guy. Um, and uh, then the spell gets put on Titania to, like, fall in love with the donkey guy. And um, she's all coming on to him and shit, and he's just all like, oh, hey, baby, but also kind of terrified. I think, is that right? Yeah, something like that. Anyway. Uh, Nick Bottom, by the way. Yeah, that's it. Um, and uh, anyway, my drama teacher... <laughs> He was, a, he was a character. I still don't know to this day whether or not he was actually a pervert or whether mm -hmm. he just had the air of one. He kind of reminded me of, reminds me of uh, Rich Vulture um, from, like, the Mighty Boosh and stuff. Uh-huh. That's Rich. Yeah, it's Rich Vulture, right? That's his name. Yes. Um, and um, anyway, so he got me and some other girl in our class to do this scene, and he just made it so fucking explicit. Like, we were right up in each other. Like, not literally, but almost. And, like, we had to... And I had to... I was playing Titania, and I had to, like, seduce her. And, um, you know, like, writhe and all of this kind of stuff. And it was just so fucking uncomfortable because the girl that he picked, fucking... We couldn't stand each other. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I always kind of, like, had a suspect... I like a suspect... A suspicion, sorry, of, like... Huh. Was he, that entirely professional? <laughs> right. He was taking that home with him. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, slotting it in the wank bank. <laughs> right. I'm about yeah. to make these two chicks kiss. Yeah, two girl and girl students. Kind of. Yeah, I mean, we basically he was just like, yeah, get closer. Yeah, no, get up. Like, you know, what, you know, seem like you're going to kiss her. So, you know, see, like, you know, I'm just like, oh, I'm going. Yeah, <clears throat> probably wasn't that cool, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's a funny story I get to tell now. So, hey, trauma. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> 
no it wasn't that bad but yeah it was just it was made just more awkward because the fact i just really couldn't stand this girl <laughs> yeah I, I mean you're you're supposed to have chemistry i suppose yeah i mean um, i'm a really good actress so i think i pulled it off you know you know <laughs> all, all humility aside yeah i know I, you, she says humbly <laughs> you, you, you're putting the asses in the seats <laughs> literally because you know bottom. oh yeah sure because nick bottom yeah. turns into an ass yeah exactly yeah. nice Full um, circle. <laughs> we're professionals podcasting professionals don't even worry about what? it <laughs> you're in safe hands listeners mm -hmm. um i mean kind of i mean not really right like we're gonna <laughs> inevitably some raw shit is gonna be said um, yeah yeah <laughs> it, it, i guess i should i never do this but if you've never listened to heart of horror before it's us talking about a movie that's got an element of romance or love or mm. sex in it and then we're gonna do some real talk about love and romance and sex and yeah this time around we are talking about uh, in particular the kind of relationship you have where you're just into a person that you know is not good for you <laughs> and to uh <laughs> encapsulate that in a cinematic form yeah we have chosen a movie that launched uh, a thousand erections and that's oh my god seriously seriously Re seriously dude return of the living dead 3 is dude. one of those movies i will say this up front this is not a good movie oh it's not a fucking awful movie but it's oh it's something though isn't it but it definitely has a kink factor to it that... oh i'm sorry but this is more kink factor than fucking hellraiser in my opinion oh for sure yeah, yeah yeah you know like people talk about how you know there's all those fucking memes with how raids like you know they had the 50 shades kind of play off where it's just like let me show you to my playroom and then it was like her oh, fucking amateurs and whatever and you got the centibites and shit so i always feel like how razor is like the kind of the pinnacle for like bdsm horror mm -hmm. this blows out of the fucking water Hellraiser has the vibe like it it talks the talk this is a mm -hmm. movie that walks the walk oh yeah where... like i love how razor don't get me fucking wrong but oh, this sure. one damn yeah uh it's 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 something but yeah this is we'll one of those <laughs> those movies that when you mention it to people they're like oh yeah right the mm -hmm. the the zombie with all the piercings and stuff got it right yeah that yeah. is that is locked into speak of the spank bank that is that's in mm -hmm. the spank vault i took a video of that scene and sent it to this guy i'm sleeping with mm -hmm. um because yeah we both enjoyed that scene <laughs> sure yeah <laughs> he, he's never seen the film but um oh by the way a quick fyi i broke up with my partner it's not a thing um but yeah so um i sent it to him and i was just like watch this and he was just like oh fucking hell <laughs> it's yeah it's a real something but um <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> so i you know i feel i feel like i've made a living off of dating people that were bad for me <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that was that's sort of my vibe you know <laughs> Let, less so the past few years like i've made better decisions for myself even uh, even the relationships i'm not that... sure i have i'm really not sure that i have mm, well you know personal growth is still a concept that i'm struggling with but i guess you know i'm a, a, a little bit younger maybe i've still got time to catch up yeah look i you know it took me into my 40s oh yeah. well i got six years of carnage yet so yeah right just lay waste <laughs> leave bodies oh, behind you smoking wreckage all of it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it, it truly wasn't until my 40s and, and you know hours and hours of therapy that it was like oh okay well i don't have to date people that will make me feel like a piece of shit okay got it right and uh but but i did that a lot or the and the other the other twist in that and you know we'll get more specific as we go on but I'm sure. the other side of that is not just like oh i'm going to date somebody <laughs> that's going to make me feel bad about myself or the other one is i'm going to date someone that is so fundamentally broken themselves oh my god yes that's my fucking buzz card that's yeah. my fucking buzz card i am i and i don't fucking mean to i don't mean i don't know what it is but I just attract people who are fucked up somehow well, or have had fucked up experiences. And I don't know why, but I just fucking attract it. And you know what? 
there are certain benefits to it sometimes <clears throat> not gonna lie are, are we just leaning into the like having sex with crazy people can be fun yeah mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it really can well, it is <laughs> sure that's that's true but but also it leads to you know see above regarding uh making bad Dangerous decisions for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right it, you're just picking someone that you know either consciously or subconsciously you know well this can't ever work out <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> but i'm going to rationalize my way into this relationship regardless can you stop calling me out though i swear <laughs> to fucking god <laughs> now, look we've all done it that is the thing it is do you do it repeatedly sure is it a yeah. <laughs> i did it i did it for two decades did you have a kid with one of them no 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 i didn't do yeah, that. yeah well i fucking top drums you then didn't i so <laughs> no i uh i i drowned her uh no <laughs> I just took a drink bow and I literally sprayed it all over my fucking laptop. You have to warn me when you say shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is no warnings for this. No, I've just fucking pulled that. I was just fucking <laughs> dribbled all down my chin and shit. Thank you. Cheers. I'm fucking lost right now. Cheers. You're welcome. <laughs> uh i'm oh boy that's that's what i meant to do i meant to get a beer before we started and i didn't oh go get a beer go get yourself a fucking beer i've got a gin and tonic it's beautiful yeah i'll be fine um oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, because then, I, like, it's bad enough that we say what we do on this show. All I need, because I don't drink enough. <laughs> so, like, one beer is the equivalent of six beers for a regular person. Sometimes I need a drink for this show. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I should. So I don't get all cagey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've been holding back? Is it just the, the drinking that... <laughs> I know I've drunk on some episodes and those are the episodes where I listen back and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I said that, didn't I? <laughs> sure. The Mento yeah. story. Um, oh, oh, I've got a, I've got a fucking firecracker for you guys later. Like, yeah. yeah. Listeners, pre-warning, buckle up. You think the Mento story was bad? This is going to fucking give you nightmares. <laughs> so, you know, tune in <laughs> for that later. Uh, yeah, Poe doesn't know what it is either. So yeah. you guys are going to come on this ride with me. <laughs> Down <Absolutely>. to hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about this, but um yeah so you know in the context of the movie we'll we'll start with with that yeah which is the the story of the return of the living dead gas the trioxin 245 is yes. the uh the the gas in question um that that it has turned up at a facility and it's a bunch of people trying to essentially use it to create super soldiers mm -hmm. and we start off with our main characters of the movie who are uh, uh julie and kurt mm -hmm. and melinda clark uh famously plays julie uh in the film and kurt is played by some dude um <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna stick with what matters <laughs> and in fairness like melinda clark went on to have you know a, a good career like, yeah it's a steady career wasn't it i she's definitely cropped that because like, i uh recognized her imdp bitch i was like where the do i know her from she's cropped up in a few things she's like in once upon a time and i think she's like in law and order and shit and whatever um yeah like a bunch of episodes of like the vampire diaries and... yeah oh yeah that was it yeah not fucking what i said uh what did i say the first one the fucking once upon a time no it wasn't that it was vampire diaries i knew it was some fucking shit yeah but uh, like <laughs> it'll she... merge into one after a while <laughs> sure uh and she was uh, you know i know her best uh from the show firefly uh oh fuck yeah because she plays the fucking in the brothel in it yeah nandi yeah. was her name uh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was a great episode yep they're all great episodes. Fuck you, Joss Whedon. Yeah, a piece of shit, dude. And I, you know, as much as I, I hate that he made so much material that I love, I yeah. still love that material. And Oh, I fucking love that material. For me, it's just like, I have this mug, mm -hmm. and it's a Buffy mug. Mm -hmm. And and it, and it, this is, it's a, it's a quote from, I'm not going to show my nerdiness by telling you exactly the episode it comes from but I do know it. Um, but yeah, uh, it has this quote from Buffy. And so it's got her looking all badass on one side. And the other side, it says, I have a strategy. You're not in it. And uh, I was like, well, isn't that going to be my attitude towards the show? <laughs> like, you know, like this show is awesome. 
and I'm just going to separate you from it because we don't need you no more. You know, like we've transcended. It's kind of like J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter. You know what? I fucking love the books. Certainly not going to give you any more money, but I'm going to continue to enjoy those stories because they mean what they mean to me. And none of your fucking bullshit is going to tamper that. Mm hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I th I think at this point that's what we've got to do, just because it is so, <laughs> it's so pungent with fucking bullshit. Yeah, well, I mean, what are you gonna do? Not watch anything, you know? <laughs> right. uh, because everybody, it turns out, is a piece of shit. Like Kerry Fukunaga, who did that amazing season of Tr True Detective, turns uh -huh. out he's probably a piece of shit too, and that's yeah. a real bummer. I'll tell you, he's not a piece of shit though. Go on, Johnny fucking Depp. Yes. I don't know anything about this. Oh, don't even get me on this. I've been watching the whole fucking thing. I've been following it for a couple of years. Like, I've been listening to the audios. I've been like a fucking... I've been like the asshole who watched Unsolved Murders who thinks they could probably fucking solve it just mm -hmm. by watching the Netflix documentary. But, like, for realsies. And, like, like I don't care if I can come at me, whatever. I don't give a fuck. But, like, yeah, there was... It, and if that result was going to... That result, like, it's a fucking football game. But if that um, fucking... What's the word? Verdict. Thank you. If that verdict was anything other than like not guilty or whatever, like um, I would have di literally just lost faith because the amount of fucking evidence. Sure, he is not perfect. And yeah, sure, he has said some things that is, you know, on paper, not the best and like, you know, whatever. But like in terms of like real crime and in terms of real abuse and manipulation, like the amount of overwhelming evidence that not only disproves that he is an abuser but also proves that she is an actual fact the abuser is just overwhelming and like oh yeah anyway but johnny depp is a fucking awesome slightly dark sense of humor you don't want to read his text when he's mad um <laughs> kind of thing but aside from that he is not an abuser and he's fucking great all right i will take your word for it i've yeah. i've kind of made my line in the sand being like, I don't need to know anything about this. I don't know these people. That's totally <laughs> this, fair. These are just rich people trading money with one another, and I couldn't care less. <laughs> uh, she ain't rich, that rich no more. Apparently, she can't afford the fucking money she's supposed to be paying up, oh, <laughs> and no. she's appealing it. But, um, but yeah, but I'm just really happy that Pirates of the Caribbean is not tainted. Um, what were we saying before that? Oh, oh, we were saying about how um, Joss Whedon's a dick, and then we yeah. were talking about how. Um, fucking shit what were we talking oh, about we were talking about the movie okay so okay th yeah, this all started <laughs> yeah th this all started with trying to describe how this movie starts so you've got yes. kurt and his girlfriend julie and they're kind of hanging out on the beach and the first indication that julie is probably a little fucked up is you see her doing uh the bit where she's like holding uh her hand over a, a a lighter yeah you know getting it's off not on the hot paint or anything it's not hot or, at all or anything the, when i think about that i think about the movie uh all the president's men where, oh, i haven't seen that i need to watch that i want to watch it oh it's so good anyway mm. yeah, but, but they, they talk about how g gordon liddy one of the in you know kind of political enforcers for nixon would do that at parties Oh, right. Okay. And, and just be a weirdo. And so when I see somebody doing that, I'm like, oh, yeah, like G. Gordon Liddy. And then I have to explain <laughs> who G. Gordon Liddy is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate the context. You're, you're, look, even people who live in this country don't remember G. Gordon Liddy <laughs> anymore. But, but he, and like, it's too young even for me. That happened before I was born. Oh, but, wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because Nixon, right? Right. So, yeah. So anyway. Um, but Julie is a little, you know, cuckoo, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's the scientific I mean, term. all you have to do is look at her hair and know that. You think that the hair, the kind of blown back. The blown back, bright red, fucking wild. I mean, I'm not criticizing. Mm -hmm. I am here for that hair. Sure. Um, but it does, it does give an indication of the kind of person that she is. Cause that's not natural. She's chosen that hair. And so I feel like you need to take a fucking note. Well, and she's going for that uh, very difficult punk goth, goth crossover look. Yeah, it's like a biker mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. It's... Yeah, and he actually has a bike, doesn't he? So that works. Right, but he doesn't dress as hardcore as she does. 
No. You know? But let's be honest, we know who the boss is in this relationship. Oh, a hundred percent. Like he is <laughs> he is a moped guy in a motorcycle relationship. Oh, is that not a fucking good analogy? Absolutely. You know, he is hanging on for his dear life. Like he <laughs> yeah. knows what he's got his arms around. And it is just <laughs> he's just trying not to get bucked off. Yeah, a hundred percent. And he but he is hundred percent here for that ride, even if it does, you know throw him off oh yeah yeah oh he rides it all the way to hell that's for sure (laughs) (laughs) i hear it's a good ride though so yeah crazy um (laughs) but you know and this gets to the real world stuff but that is the relationship that we've all had though at least once if not multiple times because it's a mistake that's real easy to make of like this person is interesting they're really different the sex is great. Then we you have, just feel alive. Right. We have almost nothing in common. Mm-hmm. I'm doing everything in my power just to try to keep them interested. I'm yep. not getting anything fulfilling out of this relationship <laughs> other than the sex. And the rest <laughs> of the time, it's a whole hell of a lot of work. Yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So, yep. uh, I mean... <laughs> but but uh, I don't know if it's immaturity that leads us into those relationships or if it's just that that's just how most relationships are where you're just trying to make that square go into the round hole. Mm. And I don't mean the sex part, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to, for me, okay, so like I know this isn't just like this scenario, but for me, this is a real easy thing for me to fall into because while I do have ADHD, I tend to hyperfixate on people. Mm-hmm. And I'm very impulsive Mm. and I tend not to think about myself in terms of putting myself first when the id factor is so great, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, like I don't really make rational thought when it comes to my id factor taking over. So for me, um, it's like, I'll have like, I guess if we're going with id factor analogies, a got my super ego going "Mm, well you know we should be doing this because uh, they're a little bit like this and you know this isn't gonna end well and like you know whatever and then i've got my id factor like just stomping on my super ego going no fuck you orgasms are great fucking go with it kate you know (laughs) right (laughs) and i'm just like oh my god yeah like (laughs) well um so (laughs) yeah uh yeah I, i tend to make this mistake a lot and uh the 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 bad part is, is when it flips and the guy then actually ends up falling in love with me. And then I think I've fallen in love with them. And then it's like, oh yeah, five years later or whatever. It's like, oh no, maybe they're not the right person for me. And maybe actually this is really toxic and actually maybe, <clears throat> maybe I should get out of this, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't know that I've had one go years like this. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. I've also had ones that are more short lived, but, um, what can I say? I'm fucking charismatic and charming, so <laughs> no argument here. But I, my my thing is though, because I'm I'm pretty, I I'm self absorbed a lot of times, and or you could argue it's self reflective, whatever. But I think about the decisions I've made a lot, and you know where I am in life, and blah blah blah. And mm-hmm. so those relationships, the thing that will surface pretty quickly for me is this sense of like oh i'm pushing this rock up the hill you know that right, i'm yeah. i'm mm-hmm. constantly the one that's you know it, it, it's like uh the old looney tunes cartoon with the so, big yeah. bulldog and the little dog that's like hey we're friends aren't we spike huh spike aren't we and i can oh. find my I, I feel myself getting trapped into that you know we're pals right spike kind of <laughs> kind of thing only yeah. instead of hey we're pals it's like the sex is great, isn't it, Spike? We can we can do it all the time. We don't have to talk about anything or our feelings or <laughs> mutually support one another or anything, right? <laughs> yeah. And but at a certain point, I'm like, oh wait, I'm not I'm not getting anything out of this other that, other than the yeah. sex, which I is great. I think that's the thing. It's like it's whether like you want anything more than just the sex or not. Like yeah, yeah. You know, like I mean, if you're like you know all I want is sex and I just want to have fun and that's cool then it's fine you know and I feel like those situations are a lot easier because you can be open about like how you're feeling and stuff and you can have that communication and 
you know, because you know that whatever you're going to say, you're probably, you know, because you're not following like your emotions, you're not like, you know, falling for anyone. You can kind of be like a little bit more sort of open. And then if it gets to a point where you are feeling something, then like hopefully you're in a position where you feel like you can say it's when it's when you you are emotionally invested and you know that the other person isn't and you're just trying to keep up and um, you're just trying not to do anything and you're kind of walking on eggshells because you don't want to say or do anything that like lets them in that you maybe have caught some feelings and stuff and then mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then that's when you start like having the whole yeah no this is great we're cool right we're cool 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 yeah like we're still friends we're good we're good you know like uh, because you need that reassurance because you're so fucking terrified of losing whatever it is that you've got going on that you will just do anything to keep hold of that person and then that's when it's it's toxic and then that's when it's kind of like you know julian kurt yeah and it it becomes not just work but it's the kind of work that at the end of it you feel bad you yeah. know and there's nothing worse than being in a relationship like everybody argues and has their good days and bad days and all that stuff yeah yeah but when the trend is Oh, after every encounter, like once the coming is done, <laughs> I I feel like emotionally bad, you know, like yeah. I, I feel, I feel insecure or I feel, uh, dismissed by the other person. That's yeah. a big one where they're just like, okay, well, we're like you said, it's weird that the emotion for one person turns on and the other one's yeah. still like, it's oh, like no. I've got what I needed and we're good now. You can go. Yeah. And right. you kind of feel used. And I mean, like some people like that. <clears throat> Definitely not one of those people. <clears throat> Definitely not. Um, but like, uh, but you know, like, you know, if, if you know, it's different. If you are emotionally invested in stuff and then you sort of feel like you've been used a little bit and you kind of like, you're in one place and the other person isn't in that place, then yeah, you feel fucking awful about it. Yeah. It, you know, it goes back to when we talked about the movie Spring, that opening, not opening scene, but it, that early scene where, he has sex with the girl that he calls up mm. on his birthday and she's just oh, like yeah. you know what does this mean like you don't do you even like me yeah and you know it, it's uncomfortable but th where kurt is in the movie is still in the the phase of like i am i am holding on with both hands yeah he's in the middle of the tornado oh wait not in the middle because the middle's calm isn't it but he's in he's in that tornado yeah mm -hmm. and so much so that he has stolen a security key <laughs> from his pop who runs this, you know, secret zombie experiment. <laughs> <laughs> and so bring your bring yours under work day, like can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, she's very excited because she wants to break in. <laughs> like a, a classic bad girl move, like, hey, will you like piss off your family? <laughs> for my you know whimsy just yeah. my just entertainment i don't even know what we're gonna see i just want to break into a military installation <laughs> i would need to what. break federal fucking law right for shits and gigs yeah because guess what i'm really good at head yeah <laughs> right. you know like it's just such it's such bullshit but like as well like for once as well his dad is not an arsehole because often when you see especially when it's military types often you see this trope of like the dad's a dickhead and stuff and i don't know maybe like he's supposed to be a dickhead but as a parent i'm like no no fucking listen to your dad like he fucking knows like yeah, yeah he's totally fine he's just like he's, totally, he's just worried for his kid yeah yeah i mean and he this... does everything for his kid <laughs> right he, it looks like he's a single parent you yeah know? going to work and... every day just hoping like just don't do drugs that's all I want. Yeah, just don't shag a fucking psychotic. Like, don't yeah. do drugs. And, like, you know, just... I mean, I, I get I, I mean, I get why Kurt's kind of all, like, resentful and shit because he moves around a lot, it seems. And, you know, his dad's probably never really there because he's working a lot and stuff. But, you know, where it counts, where, it, like... Well, I say where it counts. But, like, you know, when it comes to, like, how he feels for his son, like, you know, his dad is, is 100% there. And, and we see this, especially as the movie kind of, like, plays out. And it was just... It was really nice to see, like, this military tough guy type dad actually give a fuck about his kid because so often we, we don't we see you know he doesn't give a shit and he fucking hits him and he's fucking he's an asshole and so you can understand a lot more from the kid's perspective but in this perspective like i was in this scenario i was just kind of like kurt come on like i mean i okay yeah i get it i mean look at her jesus but like but also though like maybe listen to 
maybe you got like a smidge, like a smidge, like just a little bit, like maybe you don't break into, you know, a high, highly secured fucking containment unit where you don't know what's happening. And then, you know, well, fucking shit hits the fan, doesn't it? So I, I really like how in this movie, even the actors are like, hey, it sure looks cheap around here. And they had to throw, <laughs> throw in a line where somebody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's government funding and whatnot. We're trying to get yeah. some, some money to make this place a little more secure. <laughs> I forgot about that line, but yeah, that really made me chuckle. <laughs> I love the self-awareness. Just, yeah. Oh, yeah. fucking A. Is this, fucking A. Uh, so this is just a shipping container? Yeah, just a shipping container is yep. where we are. Yeah, you are right. <laughs> but... So the, uh, Julie and Kurt sneak in and they see this experiment go down, which is them exposing uh, the military, exposing a corpse to the, the trioxin, which mm -hmm. makes the zombie come back to life. Yeah. And of course, it just goes completely tits up right away. Of course. And, you know, movies. Right. It, like the zombie, they, they tried this gun that like freezes the brain when mm. it breaks loose but that doesn't work and it just ends up biting more people who become zombies and finally they're just like all right just strap everybody in there down and, <laughs> and kill them yeah uh, yeah but no mercy <laughs> right but meanwhile there's a, a lady visiting a lady military person who's like well this oh, is... isn't she a dick <laughs> yeah she's like this is per well you suck kurt's dad but <laughs> the the root of this is good because what we can do is put these zombies in these exoskeletons so when they're not in battle they can't move and then we just drop them in to you know a military zone let mm -hmm. them go nuts and then when the you know the enemy is all dead and zombies i suppose then yeah <coughs> yeah it's like you it's one of those plans that they've only thought through <clears throat> step two of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there really is no sort of foresight on this. Right. I don't feel at all. Although, they, I don't know if they know about it yet, do they? Because, like, they all seem, like, real shocked. Because, obviously, when um, the, you know, patient zero, so to speak, like, he bites the, um, you know, the other the military people, they don't they they seem quite surprised that the other guy gets up like they don't really sort of seem to anticipate that when one of you gets bitten that you are also going to reanimate um so maybe they just didn't they weren't aware of it because presumably zombie law is not a thing in the in this world of this film maybe, so maybe but... they just weren't aware but it happened in the previous movies in the same franchise oh yeah no yeah no that is right yeah this is a third one isn't it yeah yeah, and I haven't it, seen. I haven't seen any. This is the first movie of this franchise I've seen. So. Oh, you've never. The original Return of the Living Dead is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's it's very very good. So I highly highly recommend that movie. It's terrific. Check it. It's it's got a great like punk rock soundtrack. Oh, uh, nice. It was directed by the guy who wrote Alien. Oh fuck. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah I know he. I can't remember his name, but I know he mean. Yeah. Dan nice. O'Bannon. Yeah. He's. A oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 And he's like mates with all carpenter and shit. Yeah, it, he's he's terrific. It's a great movie. It's really grim and nihilistic. Linnea Quigley's in oh, it. It's it's wonderful. Yeah, so I love that shit. All right, cool. yeah. I'm there, there's out. exactly one good Return of the Living Dead movie, and there are like <laughs> six of these things. <laughs> yeah, I have fun with this one though. So this is this is cool. I feel like this is a nice easy end. Yeah, I mean this. It, the only thing that connects this to the other movies really is the whole trioxin thing. Oh, right. Okay. And and the fact that the zombies can kind of talk. Right. Okay, sure. Yeah. Because what I also like, sorry, skipping ahead a little bit, but like, um, we can skip back again. But like, I quite liked is how, even though, like, we, I don't, we don't really see often this sort of stage where she's not quite there, but neither is she alive. But, you mm. know, she's still herself, but she's not like, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, you don't really see that too often. I think the closest thing I've seen to that is like, well, funnily enough, in Vampire Diaries, when, like, bef because you only become a vampire once you feed on another person, but the hunger becomes so great that you just, you can't help it. But you're still you're kind of yourself. You're just, not, you're dead, but you're not a vampire yet. And it's kind of, that's the only other time where I've seen anything remotely like this. With zombies, it's usually just very fucking instantaneous. Like, you get bit and all of a sudden you're, <laughs> You don't retain any of, like, your old personality. You, don't, you know, you know, you're not conscious, particularly, you're not, you know, you're not cohesive. 
Um, so that was a really kind of like interesting idea for me. I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, and there is some of that in the original Return of the Living Dead as well. Mm, so there's cool, cool. there's a little bit of that too. But nice. Uh, but yet more so in this. This is very much the, that's kind of the arc of the movie. I was going to say yeah, that's the yeah that's the main kind of point. Yeah, it, it was a cool idea. I thought I'd, I'd say I hadn't really seen it much else. So yeah, if if you just wrote down what this <laughs> movie is on paper, it's probably okay as long as mm. it's only a paragraph. Like the devil's yeah, just... in the details. In yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna just file tell you, I had a fucking blast with this movie. Yeah. Um, I really did. It was just, it was so much fun. I had a kind of idea of what I was getting myself into in terms of like the overall vibe, and it did not disappoint. So I was just, yeah, I, I had fun with this. I didn't go in expecting anything elevated or anything, and um, it, it, yeah, I had a good time. I'd, I'd hundred percent watch this again. This is great ironically that's how i preface uh dates with me it's just like look you need to have your expectations set don't expect anything great don't sell yourself short folk you are a catch and a half and honestly you have great fucking game you have great game don't sell yourself short bud in in fairness i i feel like this is also something i came to later but yeah i like at this point i'm like oh yeah 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 i you know, to use a, a term I've already used, I can put the asses in, in the seats. Like, there yeah, is, you can. There's a uh, there's some upside. I I'm I am a good date for sure. Nice. Like, I I'm, I can see that hundred percent. You know, like I'm very I'm very fun. I'm very open to like you know, hey, if if we want to ditch original plan and go with a plan B, then let's do yeah. that. And yeah, yeah. Um. You know, oh. And once again, just be be down with Gunalingus. Just be ready to make that happen. Ah, bo, 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 bo. Yeah, it's Speaking a my language. It's a point of pride. Um, <laughs> oh, by the way, <clears throat> so the guy I'm sleeping with mm -hmm. listens to the show, mm -hmm. um, and he very much enjoyed our discussion. <laughs> yeah, did he? Did he take some good lessons? He is, is he down for it? No, no. Oh, uh, he don't. He doesn't need lessons. Oh, and great. He's just. He's already in agreement with you. Fantastic. <laughs> um, here's what, here's. I know what, he's going to listen back to this, and I'm just going to. He's going to get. Like I know the conversation that we're going to have. Here is one of those moments, like we, <laughs> that, I find interesting from a human point of view, and it's not something <laughs> okay. I think about necessarily in the moment, but it's one of those things you think about later. But it's like when you're in one of those wonderful sex sessions that is going on for, you know, a couple of hours, like, you know, you're going down on her, she's going down on you, then you're fucking, and then there's mm -hmm. maybe some more oral sex. And, you know, it's just, you're, it's just a big burrito of sex <laughs> of all stripes. When you stop and think about it for two seconds of like, I don't even know what's in my mouth anymore. <laughs> I've got so many like competing fluids. I don't even know what this taste is. <laughs> yeah. But I, I like to me that's that's where you're just like your most animal and human when you're in those moments of just like this is just you know sweat and lube and semen and like all of it's just all swirl together. Everybody's got mm -hmm. it on them yeah i love it that's why they call it a facial yeah yeah but i mean it goes both ways it's one of those things like i you know i have known guys that are like well i don't want to kiss my girlfriend after she blows me oh that's such fucking bullshit right and you're like what it's are you talking bullshit. about so like uh i love kissing after a guy goes down on me like it's oh like if they shove their fingers in my mouth after fingering me like it's just mm -hmm. something is so innately hot about that and like <clears throat> you know like it's it's just all fucking natural do you know what i mean like right. it's like it's not gonna hurt you it's not gonna fucking do anything like jesus like just fucking grow a pair and just enjoy the fucking moment you know like enjoy the fact that we're sharing <laughs> yeah and if you get a little nip <clears throat> of your semen and it grosses you out that just means you need a more pineapple right yeah yeah mm -hmm. hold off the asparagus mm -hmm. get some more pineapple in you that's right for sure for sure <laughs> um yeah 
<laughs> that's just good advice um yeah i think it is lol sex is fun yeah oh <laughs> my god yeah um, yeah yeah it, like if you're with the right sexual partner like mm -hmm. you know it's something we've talked about on this show before but the having a partner that is both intellectually fun and somebody that you can laugh with yeah and then also you're just like I j oh my god i want to fuck you <laughs> like that is just a, 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 a such a heavenly combination <laughs> yeah it's really fucking great right <laughs> yeah it's it, it the absolute best and, so um, and then if you're super lucky, if you're especially lucky, then you're going to have that person that not only like makes you happy and challenges you emotionally and intellectually and all that stuff that you like having mm -hmm. sex with, but then mm -hmm. will occasionally say that back to you where they're just yeah. like, oh my God, I want to fuck you. Yeah. You're like, mm -hmm. let's do this. You are the best. Yeah. Yeah. So like. I so okay. <laughs> I'm so aware that he's gonna listen to this episode. I'm really trying not so hard not to say too much because I always have to maintain an element of cool here. Sure. But like, um, but yeah, like the whole like, um, like as I said to him, like, because I've had fuck buddies in the past, right? And it's literally been like we're friends, and every now and then, like once every kind of couple of weeks or whatever, it'd be like, hey, you up? You know that? Yeah. They're like, yeah, cool, come over. All right, cool. <clears throat> and uh you know and it's very very kind of like low-key or whatever and like but me and this guy, like literally all we do is talk about sex all we do is talk about how much we want to fuck each other mm -hmm. <laughs> and um you know it's like um it's i said to him last was like <clears throat> is this a, like is this a problem because this is more than i i anticipated like it's not a problem but it's it's more than i anticipated and he's like nope i was like okay great okay cool like, you know? but like i think as well because even before anything we we have always been very open about each other's sex lives like we like that was one of our main points of conversation even when like i wasn't single and stuff and it was just kind of like a like it was just kind of like, oh my god and then this time it's kind of like how you and me chat like oh my god it was this thing and then oh my god that was hilarious and oh my god listen to this story and like and it was just like that but it was also kind of like huh. there was like a uh like well i mean nothing's gonna happen with this because you know i'm engaged and shit like that but like um but also like huh, i wonder what's that that's like mm. you know <laughs> and then like when i you know then became single and shit like um it was kind of like oh cool so yeah we're gonna find out <laughs> and i tell you what it's really fun so <laughs> Um, but yeah, like as you say, like when you have that kind of thing, like of like you know you, in, you inter, you know intellectually like challenge each other, and you have a lot of fun on like a friendship level, and then you also can incorporate great sex. It's just like it's just such a great combo for fucking sure. Yeah, and I think as long as you have that communication level open, where you're both kind of very forward with each other in terms of like where you're at emotionally, like if emo if there are any emotions involved or if they're not or whatever, then like you know that's that's pretty good. Like as long as you're on the same wavelength, you know. Absolutely. Um, and you know, it, it, you just have to like communication, as we have said a number of times is the key mm -hmm. to all of this, whether it's the emotional part or the sexual part, as long as, yeah. you know, you're talking, then, you know, all relationships kind of end one of two ways, which is, you, you know, you, you break up or you stay together forever. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> so even if you break up, if you kind of do it on those terms, um you know that's yeah. th that's how my last breakup was was just like you know i it was a little bit of a surprise to me but it was also like it it was outed just because we were talking yeah. and and it could have gone like it's one of those things that could have lived along for months longer yeah yeah and and i'm glad that it didn't you know yeah um see that's my that's been my problem in the past i think is i've been so worried about like having like being open or i've just not been like <clears throat> with my with my ex fiance like we just we I, I was terrible at communicating and i didn't feel like i could communicate and i felt like anytime i i tried to communicate anything that it'd get on the defensive and then he couldn't communicate with me because i'd get on the defensive and it was just a really like shit dead end of a like fucking lack of communication 
<clears throat> and in the end, we both just sort of stuck our head in the sand for so long that we ended up, you know, being together nearly eight years for Christ's sakes. I mean, in fact, over eight years, but it's just fucking insane. So like, you know, sort of henceforth, I'm always going to be very communicate, communicative and, um, and make sure that like, you know, that line of communication is open because I don't want to end up in a situation where either I feel trapped or I feel like I'm too deep or I feel like, you know, we're not on the same wavelength because, you know, bringing it back to this film, like that's it seems to be kind of where Kurt and Julie are. Like he's very much in this whirlwind and she's kind of taking charge and she, you know, she probably knows how, how like caught up in this he, he is, but there's not that communication where all that, that sense of self-awareness where you kind of like maybe we should take it like a like a put a little not necessarily a pause on it but let's just slow down a little bit let's just fucking chill or whatever which i think you know because he obviously he makes this very rash sort of decision that he's you know his dad says oh we need to move we you know i've been i've been relocated and we need to move you need to pack your bag and we're going off in basically a week and he's like no fuck you i'm staying because i love this girl and she's amazing and look at that hair and like right. you know <laughs> and like and she just gave me a blowjob not half an hour ago so fucking hell I'm all up in that and like uh you know and and I feel like it you know she, and she seems very into it and whatever but like I feel like there's they're on a different they're not on, they're not playing they're not reading the same page and um you know and I think even without what happens happening like if that didn't happen I still feel like they would crash and burn just because I feel like there isn't that level of communication because he's just this puppy along for the ride you know yeah and um, she is emo as fuck yeah that and that punk emo so she's not only emo but she has an edge yeah, it's the real like you know <clears throat> very dark very nihilistic very grim yeah. you know obsessed yeah. with death you know that's kind of yeah. one of her things in fact you know after or it's just before the scene that we were just talking about of like, you know, Hey, we're about to move. Mm. Um, we have, you know, the, I think it's the only sex scene of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I think we see her a little bit nude later, but like it's in terms of actual sex. Yeah. Yeah. And, but afterwards, like when they were laying in bed and he's like, Oh my God, you were rocking my world. Yeah. And she's like, that was, I wonder what that, dead corpse was feeling when it came back to life and he's like what are you talking about again what is this yeah. i was i was just talking about how great it felt when my pp yeah, yeah. sneezed <laughs> <laughs> yeah because she's like that was incredible and he's like yeah it was because he's talking about that and she's just like yeah like she's just she's not even in that moment she's back at the fucking you know shipping container yeah um you know and he's all up in the moment and stuff and he clearly has caught feelings and he's clearly in love with her and she's all like yeah dead bodies <laughs> you know <laughs> cool love <laughs> well i'm not here to kink shame whatever but i feel like dead bodies is maybe a kink that is maybe crossing a line well and you need to be with the guy that's also like yeah that dead body was rad as opposed <laughs> yeah. to this kid who's like I'm sorry, what? The, yeah. Are you, you're talking about the corpse, right? The one that came to life and ate a bunch of people? Yeah, and yeah. You're, you're sympathizing with that person? Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. I guess we're not going for that picnic tomorrow. I guess we're, you know, right. digging corpses. I probably, I probably shouldn't give you this mixtape because there's a little, <laughs> a little more Ed Sheeran on it than I think you're going to be comfortable with. Fuck. <laughs> that oh fuck that that was the wrong moment <laughs> i just took a sip of my drink and it not only did it go down the wrong way but it made me choke oh sorry no and now my throat hurts that's all right don't be sorry for choking me i wonder what it feels like to choke like that <laughs> exactly exactly i'm gonna sound a little bit hoarse though now <laughs> it's fine <laughs> but yeah no definitely um yeah we need some more kind of like disturbed on that shit and less than sure yeah for time. sure like yeah this is nothing but you know mostly female-led death metal yeah is what mm -hmm. you need we need some fucking um ah fuck what they called what's that fucking it's called wish in the title fucking what they called help me out by 
uh night witch the throw pack. yes the night witch yeah and all that shit like yeah, 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 yeah. some e epica mm. you might be oh. you might be able to get away with a little bit of evanescence but you got to keep like that. a touch but like yeah definitely no bring me to life right right like scratch that shit immediately yeah yeah <laughs> we want fucking like tourniquet and shit yeah yeah and I feel you. <laughs> so after <laughs> um his father is like you know hey we're gonna move he's like i'm not moving i'm gonna stay here with my creepy girlfriend yeah stamps foot mm, mm, mm. right they go off on his motorcycle mm -hmm. and she is <laughs> turned on by <laughs> you know the speed and the core the vibrations i imagine right well sure it's like sitting on a washing machine yeah but better yeah <clears throat> i have no experience in that is that true no you're being I sarcastic have... i am being sarcastic yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's really good time on the back of a motorcycle i'm not gonna lie at least when you're drunk because when i'm sober it's terrifying yeah but when you're drunk and horny it's real good so Yep, that is a that is a tidbit from me to you for free. You know, th now th this is bringing a lot of things together because now I realize that the reason I think that my girlfriend was like, "Hey, have you ever considered getting a motorcycle?" <laughs> oh shit! Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that's what it is. Yeah, and yeah, it, that is what it is. But it also like again, this is all about communication because I was like, "No, mm -hmm. do you know how clumsy I am? Do you just want me <laughs> to die?" <laughs> yeah yeah i feel that i'm so fucking clumsy so. like you know if that's what she's after i'm just gonna get like a really high-powered leaf blower <laughs> <laughs> you sit on this and i will pinch your nipples just fucking sit in front of it like <laughs> right yeah it's like yeah it's like one of the uh the shower massagers Oh, dude, I fucking broke my doxy wand earlier, I'm not going to lie. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had it for a good seven years. Yeah, seven years. Um, it's probably on its last leg anyway, but yeah, I <clears throat> it, it, it fucking fell apart. <laughs> it's not the years, it's the mileage. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, my God. Anyway, okay, so, yeah. right, male, female listeners, it's just this fucking, here's some advice. I know that they cost a lot of money. I know that they're nearly like a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars or whatever, wherever you're from. Right. <clears throat> Invest in a fucking doxy wand. I kid you fucking not. You will, you will thank me later. Um, I have, you know, you know, you watch porn sometimes and they're like, she's faking it. There's no fucking way. Like women make noises like that in real life. You sound like a fucking animal. Mm -hmm. Well, if she's using a doxy wand, there's a chance that that is real because I tell you what, I have made noises using that shit that I never thought I'd make, you know, like Jesus. Um, <clears throat> it's fucking amazing. Anyway. So I can't remember what the point of that story was. Uh, oh yeah. Fucking vibrations and motorcycles. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Uh, yeah. So get a motorcycle bow. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I just, I just can't ride it. Right. You know? Yeah. Just, just get one. Just, you know, put it on standby, put it on like, you know, when it's just like, coming along mm -hmm. and be like hey hey beautiful i'm gonna get on the back of my bike <laughs> that see that's the way to go is don't right. don't get one with wheels just <laughs> right? get the seat and the engine just yeah. <laughs> or just get a doxy wand i hear they're way cheaper than motorcycles you're so. probably right <laughs> yeah um, you're welcome <laughs> yeah thank you uh <laughs> you know I, I don't have the doxy wand but i got a couple of toys yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm sure there's there's some, some stuff you got going on. I don't imagine you, you you know you enjoy toys. Everyone enjoys toys, right? And I mean, look, sometimes you just mix it up. You want to throw a little curveball in there. Fuck yeah! Right? And I'm sorry, but dicks don't vibrate. I don't give a fuck how fast you go. Right? It, like my hips can rotate, but it can't. Uh, yeah, it can't rotate in two opposite directions at the same time. <laughs> you know that kind of stuff. It it also yeah. doesn't have twin forks that vibrate. Right. Exactly. It's like cock rings vibrating cock rings. Yeah. I'm not going to be offended if you want to whack on a vibrating cock ring. Fuck yeah, I'm going to get some of that shit too. You know, like. Mm -hmm fucking it's fine the human body can only do so much and if you want to up your game then fucking up your game there's no fucking shame in it right we're all here for the same thing 
Right? You know? Exactly. I exactly. want to come. You want to come. Let's just do what we got to do it's, to make that as fun as possible. It's not even just do you want to come. It's like, do you want to come multiple times yeah. in a row? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're gonna. Right. Even guys, you know, like, there's, oh, that shit's just going to go on and on. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so that's just <laughs> more good advice. But yeah, so right. while while she's <laughs> enjoying the motorcycle... Mm -hmm. and and giving them a not quite a handy but it's heading that way i have a story can i tell a story please <clears throat> this is neither the time nor the place oh you're right <laughs> okay so oh jesus christ okay so right it's, it's i'm on my third gin and tonic and i'm not eating dinner so we're good um okay so um <laughs> lately um i've really enjoyed driving while getting fingered oh um yeah <clears throat> and and you're in the, the guy... driver's seat mm -hmm. okay the guy doing it is really good and has actually made me come several times and doing it but also at the risk of our lives <laughs> sure yeah, yeah yeah uh apparently now i wouldn't know this because i had my eyes closed uh <laughs> but apparently we've come real close to crashing a couple of times but i'm like could give a fuck because this feels good mm -hmm. <laughs> But yeah, so when I watched that, I was just like, oh, yeah, I've been there. Been there. Uh, by um, the way, Heart of Horror does not recommend that you... No, we do not recommend that you do this, even, no matter how good it feels. Because not everyone is as a good driver as me. <laughs> your your advanced driving <laughs> skills are what's keeping you and others alive. Okay. Um, Did we die? No, we did not. Right. Well, this is so, like... So, less of your judgment, please, Mr. Ransdell. I'll tell you, let me give you an example of, uh, of how this argument will not hold up. <laughs> the, the, I, we haven't died yet argument. <laughs> I was. <laughs> no one else died either for the record. Yeah. Right. Sure. You know, a couple of wrecks behind you, but that's back there. Right. And I was having a conversation with my lady friend about how mm -hmm. much I like grape nuts as a cereal what the fuck are grape nuts Do you, oh, okay so grape nuts are a cereal from like 1850 that is just nothing but what? like barley and grit and gravel it, it is one of the least appeal appealing cereals in the history of cereals it sounds disgusting i'm not gonna lie it sounds fucking horrific just google it while we're talking and you, you can see what uh, a grape nut looks like i really kind of don't want to but all right fine all right but it's, it's a masochist in me. <laughs> it is, uh, they used to advertise it, no lie, in like the 1920s and 30s. No, shut up. Where, yeah, where they would Break be like, hey, this will help you avoid like malaria and shit. <laughs> oh, it doesn't actually look that bad. It looks just like granola. It, it That's kind of what it is, but it, it's like there's not a ton of flavor and that kind of thing but i just this is why you layer it up with sugar and like apparently strawberries and blueberries all over it yeah this is what the common theme seems to be it, i'll tell you where it's best is <laughs> you throw a little bit of that into some yogurt yes and, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. it's quality for that but i'm not above just eating a bowl of grape nuts i'm look i'm a simple man okay. with simple needs Hey, no, I, I love a bit of granola and shit. Like, I fucking love that shit. I had a bowl earlier, in fact. You ought to try some grape nuts. The The grape nut shortage is over now. It happened during the pandemic, but we're back on track, so you can get it okay. in the stores. I well, recommend trying. I don't trying. know if... I don't, I don't think we have it here. I think it's illegal there. Uh, but probably for good reason. Yeah. But um, feel free to send me a box. Or when I... <gasps> Ooh. I have some time... Fuck yeah. You know when suddenly like you have an idea and right. then you have a really good idea and you're like, oh my god, I should do that. Yeah. So I have ten days off in August, which I was gonna I had reserved something else, but that kind of has felt fallen through. But I have ten days off. What if I oh my god, I could totally come to the States. You ought to I mean, just for the grape nuts alone, but also right? because we yeah, could I was I wasn't gonna like come for you guys or sure. anything like you or Jamie or anyone, like fuck that. I'm coming for the grape nuts. Yeah. Yeah. But all right. your place. <laughs> <laughs> so i tell i tell my lady friend how much i like grape nuts and she, right. she rightfully says like are you an idiot those are terrible <laughs> she didn't even put it that cruelly like she she's a very nice person but I'm but that sure. was the gist of it was like what is wrong with you why are you eating 
why this. are you so damaged right like <laughs> yeah who hurt you what is your childhood trauma yeah i mean it's like great buffy. nuts are like the leftovers when you're making other cereal <laughs> right they're like the dregs at the bottom of the bag right it's like third right. crush cereal and oh oh no anyway uh but so as a joke i have been sending her nothing but grape nuts merchandise I'm like, oh, look, they have a Grape Notes t-shirt. I think I'm going to buy this. And, oh, here's a coffee mug. That's nothing but, like, you know, I go nuts for Grape Nuts. And <laughs> and she sends me this article that's about how, like, all the different ways that Grape Nuts was advertised. And including, and this, this is true, that it could prevent appendicitis and malaria. What? But this is like the what? 1920s when nobody understood science and stuff. And they thought that like they put coke in actual coke, actual coke and Coca Cola, and thought it exactly. was bad stimulate brain. Right, that that era of medicine. And yeah. but uh, m my point was much like your, you know, hey, I haven't killed anybody while coming in my car yet. <laughs> oh yeah, that was the point. In the yeah, story. right. No, I remember um, <laughs> where where I said yeah, but. The truth is, I have never once had malaria, and my appendix has never burst. Right. So, you tell me who's the real fool here for eating or not eating grape nuts. <laughs> yeah, I love that logic. Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, no, okay, I see how that plays back. All right, okay, all right, okay, fine. <laughs> um. Anyway, but yeah, so they're on a motorcycle. That's where all this started. Yeah, they're that's on... what... They're on a motorcycle, <laughs> and uh, she's giving him a semi-handy, and he loses control, and they go, you know, skidding off, and the motorcycle crashes, and she goes, she just does a uh, hereditary right into a pole. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, shit, I have done killed the girlfriend, what I like to have sex with. Yeah. And he's like, oh, wait a second. I've got an idea. I've still got my dad's security key. So I can... This is such a good idea. Yeah. So I can take her back to this storage container army base <laughs> and give her the gas. <laughs> yes, I know what you mean, but the way you said that just made me laugh. <laughs> that's, a, that's a creepy dentist at work. Like, Come on in. I'll give you the gas. Yeah, and, and then, then we'll have some fun. Right, whatever happens, happens. Yeah, what happens in this room stays in this room. Yeah, you're going to have some nitrous. I'm going to have a cocktail. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, so uh, anyway, she comes back to life, but he, he's kind of cagey of her. She's like, what happened? He's like, don't worry about it. And yeah. <laughs> we got to get out of here, though. Because while doing this, we have unleashed an extremely goofy zombie from this container. Yeah. <laughs> That's wandering about, causing trouble with his face, like, you know, fused to his shoulder and whatnot. Yeah. Oh, my God. The effects of the zombie are so fucking great. It's so good. I love it so much. It's... Like, his whole face comes off. Oh, my God. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's real dumb, but in a way that I I love. It, it, mm -hmm. it, it was a special note I made of how how positively adorable slash goofy this zombie is once his face pulls free. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they get out of there and they end up going to um a, a like a, a package store, a convenience store. Be yeah. Because she's like, I'm so hungry. I haven't been this hungry, I'm and he's hungry. like. How about we go get you some Twinkies? You know, that is such a fucking mood. You know where your girl's just really fucking pissy and she just doesn't see... You know that whole fucking Snickers advert where it's just like, oh, yeah, like, you're not yourself when you're hungry and then you have a Snickers and then suddenly you're okay? It's like, bullshit. That's fucking every woman everywhere. Like, just... If a girl's hungry, just mm -hmm. feed her and then she'll be the fucking most complacent fucking kitten in the world if she's fucking hungry she is a fucking tigress and you want to watch that shit because that she's got claws you know and like so her like being like i'm hungry i'm fucking hungry and she's getting all like ravenous with it and shit like literally you know um like yeah that is a mood because i've been there let me let me give people out there especially the guys this one's for the fellas mm -hmm. another pro date move 
<laughs> is after, I feel like this needs to be like Bo's corner, yeah, Bo's right. beaten corner. I need some music playing in a chair that yeah. I can turn around and sit backwards on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you edit the show, fucking put in some music. Yeah, I, I should. Um, you should. <laughs> and anyway, I'm making a note of the time code. Sorry. Um, nice. <laughs> so i can i can put in said music um yeah so in uh my, my advice for you is after you've been dating a little bit you don't want to do this like second date but after you've been dating for a couple of months you know and things are getting a little more serious you know you're starting yeah. to not necessarily settle into a routine but it's like hey if we're both off we're probably going to do something you know that stage of yeah. relationship mm -hmm. find out even if you have to ask, there's nothing. There's no harm in asking. What is your favorite food? A ask your your partner what her favorite food is. Oh no, dude, that's way that I would say that's earlier on. But but here's the trick: is learn how to make it. But yeah, yeah, that's like three months in. Yeah, yeah. That, you that's wouldn't buy her that shit to begin with, but yeah, when you're three months in, you making that shit right. And so mm -hmm. if you're ever just hanging out, because this is, again, a few months into a relationship where you might just be hanging out for a day. You don't have any real specific plans. Yeah, and, you're just enjoying each other's company. Right. Just hanging cool. out. We're going to yeah. watch a little TV. We're going to, you know, go for a walk, whatever it is. Nice. And and she's in a mood, you know, just like I had a shitty day at work, just carrying some stuff with her, you know, talk to her mom and that pissed her off, whatever it is. Yeah. Be or like, the best one, she's on a period. Because this is sure. a fucking gold mine if she's on a period. Right. And like you, you, because then you know what her <laughs> comfort food is. And yeah. you have taken the time to make it on your own. So this isn't yeah. your first attempt. <clears throat> yeah. And, and she'll appreciate that shit for sure. Right. And then you just be like, hang on, I'm going to run the store real quick. When I get back, I'm going to make you that shit you like. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed head. Gold. Guaranteed head. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, the, you're, you're right, but also it totally changes the direction of the day. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. a couple of things have happened there. One, you remembered what, what food she liked Two, yep. you cared enough to learn how to make it right. Yep. Even, even if it's 90%, even if it's 85, 85% right. Yeah. It doesn't matter. The efforts there, the thought is appreciated. Right. And mm -hmm. you you have shown her that you care. She got some food that she likes. Like you said, the next thing you know, hum, hum, hum. <laughs> yeah, although I would take a break, like a little bit of a gap, depending on what the food is. Because if it's too dairy-induced, it's going to be... Womp, womp, yeah, 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 yeah. You know. But, but yeah, but it, at some point down the road, that's going to pay dividends. Like if it's a milkshake, mm -hmm. like give it a couple of hours. Oh, for I'm sure. Saying. You know, yeah. if it's, like, mm -hmm. or if it's real spicy, Oh yeah. you know, just like, Hey, yeah, you know yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to wait for that, that to fade some, but it's mm -hmm. a, it's a pro move. I have, I've only done it a couple of times, but it, it not, not it, it doesn't only work. It is like, you just, you know, you just had surprise fireworks in the backyard for, her. you know, it's yeah. just one of those things of like this this is hitting so many buttons and mm. you know and but it's it's earnest you know because like you've taken the time you know not just yeah. committing a thing to memory but learning how to do a thing that is is just for her not yeah. your favorite food it's her favorite food and that's what's important yeah 100 percent. and cooking is such an intimate thing as well you know i feel like it is like um i have uh, a couple of friends who have been dating for a couple of months now and one of their favorite things to do is is cook together yeah. you know and it's such an intimate thing like i mean it's different to what you're talking about because obviously it's, it's all for the, the other person um and it's what they like and you're doing it for them you know and they're eating it probably like well you can share in it but like you know it also might be just that they're eating on their own mm -hmm. but also though like yeah like cooking together is like a really intimate thing like if you're doing it from scratch and properly you know and all the rest of it and you have like those really like lovely moments in the kitchen where you kind of like brush against each other or like you know i don't know whatever it's just and then you share that meal together mm -hmm. and you can kind of like enjoy in something that you two have created together like that's really nice yeah um yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah, terrific. a lot of those like oh we're making this sauce oh let me put my finger in your mouth so you get a taste of it stuff like that oh, yeah 100 mm -hmm, oh that mm -hmm. rocks that is so much fun. or like someone reaches reaches like from behind and stuff and helps you chop the peppers mm. you know like 
just puts your hand over their hand and like yeah uh, it's some good shit <laughs> I, 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 as an addendum to that it also lets you uh throw on some music yes you know oh yeah and maybe do a little bit of a dance in mm -hmm. the kitchen like they're not in anything major but just a little bit of a like a little bit of a shimmy here and there you know between movements between yep. you know going between the fridge and the sink and shit my 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 girlfriend sent me a definition she's she's a bit of a a word a wordy um and it was, i don't know what that's like <laughs> it's uh <laughs> um the the word was balter okay new word for me yeah it was for me as well but it okay. is it is a word for what we're describing here it is a word for dancing not necessarily with grace but with enthusiasm oh i love that yeah and i love that and so it has and it's one of those things that's kind of become a thing of like oh yeah we'll you know as, <laughs> as we're cooking we'll balter you know oh, i fucking love that right it's good yeah. shit. that is some good shit that is like a fucking that's fucking foreplay right there oh yeah and if like mm -hmm. even if the meal doesn't come off like you may not even get to the meal if, if oh, the yeah. cooking's mm -hmm. going well enough yeah 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 and and when i say foreplay i mean foreplay because that kind of shit you don't fucking bother with foreplay you are going straight in like mm, bang say yeah right yeah Ugh. there ain't no messing around there ain't no fucking preamble you like no fucking rip my clothes off and shove it in me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah i can I, <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm I am not going to tell this story because while I uh, oh, have to tell this story. All right. So look, yes. I'm not naming names. So, okay. We don't name names. Tell the story. Tell the story. But, uh, recently <laughs> we were going to a show, mm -hmm. uh, going to, to uh, a concert and I get a message, uh, from her. That's like, Hey, how about you come over a little early before the concert? And I'm like, Oh, I know what this is about yeah yeah and and so i do and it was and it was exactly what you're talking about where it's like we are not like the foreplay is like three kisses and insertion it yep. is just madhouse it was yeah, baby. terrific and it was one of those right. things of like hey we're gonna we're gonna have some fun before the show then we're gonna go get a good dinner then we go to go to the show and then we're gonna come back and have a whole lot more fun yeah and oh my god it's so great right yeah that's a good day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah it is <laughs> and her kids Love watch it. the whole day oh, no what? no uh, no <laughs> i'm kidding that's a joke <laughs> lols it's all right earlier when i was in the middle of breaking my doxy wand my kid walked in halfway through wanting cuddles oh that's rough i feel bad yeah. when like I'm doing a little self pleasure and the dog looks at me. <laughs> I feel awkward yeah, about but, that. I'm like, don't. Yeah, but dogs make fucking eye contact. Yeah. Don't they? They just they fucking just make eye contact dead at you, and they mm -hmm. have this real fucking look in their eye, like, oh hey, like, what are you doing? I'm just trying to handle some business, man. I don't need you staring at me. I literally I got so stressed out. I was just like, oh my god, because I was. I'm not okay. FY, FYI, this is a bit of TML, but like a TMI even. Um, but I was like this close, this fucking close when she comes up the stairs. So I'm fucking tense as shit. And I'm like giving her a cuddle and shit because I'm not a terrible parent, but I'm also like, can you just go downstairs and finish, finish watching whatever the fuck I put on for you? Can you just go? Just, mm, can you just please just go downstairs? Like I was getting really stressed out with her and she just did not understand why. And I was just like, I really just need you to go downstairs, honey. Okay, I love you lots, but I really just need you to go downstairs. Okay, please, 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 because before my buzz totally dies, because I'm going to be frustrated and in a bad fucking mood all night otherwise. And then she did go downstairs, and I was just like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then I broke the fucking doxy one, didn't I? So, but it was fine. I got there already. But right. like, um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> it was just like, I was just, yeah. She came in, I was just like, oh, right now, really, right. Like, mm, couldn't have waited two minutes you know <laughs> like fucking kids and dogs honestly they're such a buzzkill yeah yeah well i mean dogs are better than kids because there's not the emotional scarring <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm really hoping that that's not a core cool memory for her like i really hope <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm sure it wasn't i managed to sort of get myself relatively okay 
before she came through the door. <laughs> yeah, the the one thing that you're trying to avoid is her telling that story in the future, and the next line is, well, it looks like our hour is up. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Like, because also I guarantee with the economy the way it's going, I'll be paying for that shit, and I'll only have myself to blame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you did that. Yeah, um, I did do that. I did a bad, bad thing. You and Toxy. <laughs> Baby did a bad, bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's your <laughs> your official Chris Isaac moment in the show. Oh, uh, you know you gotta have one. Sure. Every, every now and every now and then you gotta have one. It's a sexy show. And it is a sexy show. Chris Isaac is a sexy motherfucker. Right. Uh, Absolutely. Where were we in the film? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, they go to the convenience store. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and she's, like, eating the place up. And she's like, I'm still hungry. This is doing nothing. And then they run afoul in this uh, grocery store of uh, a couple of dudes. Uh, oh, some, that's such assholes. Some, some street thugs. Mm. And uh, Kurt ends up, like, running into one of them. And then there's... Uh, a scuffle there's a lot of dick wagging through all of this <laughs> in the meantime judy's just still chowing down on twinkies right i was just like oh i gotta i i gotta get something i can't i can't fill this hole i'm hangry yeah and during all this scuffle one of the gang members shoots the guy who owns the convenience store mm. and then julie bites him yeah and he's like what the hell and so the alarm is going off. All the gang members leave. Um, Kurt and Julie are like, hey, we're going to get this shopkeeper to the hospital. So they throw mm. him in a van. And Kurt is driving off with uh, with Julie and the shopkeeper in the back. And he's like, well, at least we're doing a good thing, right? We're going to get this guy to the hospital. Hey, what is all that <laughs> smacking noise? Like somebody is devouring <laughs> something wet and smushy. <laughs> and he looks over his shoulder and sure enough, Julie is <laughs> eating brains. Chowing on his brains, yeah. And I'm sorry, but like, it's like, I love the effect on this bit. Like the way, like, you can see, like, I don't know if it's this bit, but it's, I think it's a little bit later, but like, you can just see like the half eaten away brains bit and stuff and it's just such a great effect like i don't know how it, i think it's probably done with cgi i can't imagine but like it was done in practically but it looks so great and it's so fucking gnarly i love it and then like when he's moving around later when he sort of reanimates himself and he's like moving around and you just sort of see this like half eaten head <laughs> fucking great yeah uh it's it's messy for sure it's so, so messy all right so the the gang is like hey we're gonna get even with julie and kurt uh because of the slight you know they bit their thumb at us and <laughs> <laughs> and also we're going back to shakespeare yeah always uh you know this show is nothing if not classy right <laughs> yeah <laughs> and classy and british <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> two things that i definitely am both of those like together i mean i'm one of those at least anyway it's up to you to decide which one <laughs> and you were in a midsummer night stream so that's I classy was. and i was in 12th night oh played sir andrew agachik thank you with a fat suit and everything nice ah uh, yeah i had a really bad date seeing uh 12th night one time oh i'm sorry dude it, well, I hope it wasn't seeing my school play <laughs> it, no it was not your production okay Okay, great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Julie and Kurt decide that they're going to hide in the sewers mm-hmm. where they run into this guy who lives down there named the River Man. Call me River Man. I love Man. him. I love him. I love everything about him. He is this guy who has a lot of wisdom, uh, who lives in the sewers, and uh, what it, the, the quarter, is that what it is? His coin? Yeah, I think so. I'm not, I'm not familiar with American currency, but sure. Yeah, I think that's right. Because he gives them, uh, the, the river man gives Kurt this coin and is like, you know, I'm helping you out and I'm going to give you this coin. And all I ask is that you, you know, you pay it for that. You help somebody out and you give them this yeah. coin. Because as long as this coin is out there circulating, I know that somebody's doing something good for somebody else. Yeah, it's so lovely. And... <laughs> he's also like hey what's going on with your lady friend 
yeah. <laughs> who seems who seems to be shoving screws into her fingers at this point. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my god, it's so gross and horrible, but it's so great. And right, and and so because she's realized that like if she if she gives herself physical pain, then it lessens the hunger. Right. This is the kink part of this. Of like, she is absolutely a masochist. Mm-hmm. And not only is she a zombie, a sexy zombie masochist, there is this reveal of her where, like, after Kurt and the Riverman have been, you know, jabber on about helping people and whatnot. Yeah. They're like, hey, where is the, your crazy girlfriend? And she comes out with, like, the torn fish nets. Mm-hmm. piercings and everything chains going from nipple to nipple yeah you know needles stuck through her fingers she's got everything like going through her neck yeah yeah it's <clears throat> it's hot this is what i recorded and sent to my fuck buddy basically i was just, and we were both there just like mm-hmm <laughs> it, it is the moment of the movie it is the the mm-hmm. thing that when you see it you're like this is so like perverse and sexy and amazing and like when you see her she is licking her lips and like yeah you know if a and she does that like body writhe as she kind of like you you know you kind of see her like from like head to toe kind of thing you see the full kind of canvas and she does this like body ride mm-hmm. as she comes up out of the like the water and stuff because they're still in the sewers i think they're still in the sewers yeah, right yeah, yeah yeah and she kind of like yeah comes out of the water and she just does this like body ride and stuff and her nipples are all and she's got the piercings and oh my oh jesus fucking christ mm-hmm. this is what you watch the movie for these like 10 seconds this is what you watch it for and uh, it's right. so fucking worth it a hundred percent and and like i said this is the scene that if any any guy who saw this movie in their formative teen years or preteen <laughs> years it is Oof, immediately like, it. oh yeah this is you know this is the videotape that i wore out yeah yeah or, 100%. Or, or this section of the videotape. This, yeah, exactly. Everything else is fine, and then it's <laughs> right white noise. <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously, Den Hurt, Melinda Clark is a beautiful woman, no doubt about it, but yeah. just completely fetished up. Oh, Jesus, yeah. In this moment, um, you know, it, it's it's a real something. Mm. And so while Riverman and Kurt are like, the fuck mm-hmm. like i'm turned on but i'm scared but i'm turned on because i'm scared at how turned yeah. on i am yeah <laughs> <laughs> we open that <laughs> yeah, yeah oh for sure again this is bad romance 101 of like right hey re- remember that girl that you dated Bo? that you know was kind of crazy and didn't believe in vaccines and <laughs> Just was full of bad ideas, but there was something real sexy about her. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is that. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so <laughs> that led. All right, I'll tell that story real quick. So, I mean, it's very brief. But yeah, so oh, I, was, I was dating uh, the this lady. She, uh, she was really hot. She was um, a yoga instructor. That doesn't hurt. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> but, but uh w- one night after we you know hung out had a couple of drinks that kind of thing mm-hmm. uh she let it drop that you know she had a kid that was in school and she was like oh yeah you know he's never been vaccinated and i'm like what 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 uh, yeah and <laughs> so i i had a process that for a little bit and figure out if i was cool with it or not Mm -hmm. and i was like well i'm not you know like i'm not this kid's dad and we're not that serious and i really just want to fool around a little bit so (laughs) i'll i'll you know i can be cool enough with this yeah 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 but then it's not it's not your zoo it's not your monkey (laughs) right 
(laughs) But when I called her back a couple of days later, she was like, oh, have you decided that I'm okay to date after me telling you about the vaccines? Oh, oh, so she's a wife. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? You're right. You talked me out of it. I oh, was no. I was kind of okay with it up until you laid it out like that, and I realized you validated it basically. Right. Well, she just basically said like I, I'm I'm rationalizing my way into a relationship with someone whose values I clearly don't share. Yeah. And it just wasn't worth it. You know, because yeah. always, no matter what we did, in the back of my mind would be like, well, here's somebody who doesn't believe in science. <laughs> So, yeah, and when you're having sex with someone, you really kind of need them to believe in the science. Oh, or just, you know, to to feel like that they are a person that lives on planet Earth with you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, for death. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> I feel like you, I feel like you re- made the right decision there, though. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Uh, but also, like... But I was ready to make the wrong one. And that's the point of this episode, is that I was all geared up to do something really foolish. I just happened (laughs) to be undone by her further communication, you know? Yeah. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, but anyway. um, So, the gang uh, tracks Julie and Kurt to the sewer where they're hanging out with Riverman. Yep. And... Julie, like the the head gang member, is like, "Oh, look at you! You're you you're a tall drink of crazy water," <laughs> and <laughs> and she just like basically pulls his spine out. Yeah, it's so fucking good. Because we, oh, excuse me, so they've been like um they've been like hounding Kurt and Julie like for a good while now and they are i mean like they're just really atrocious people like they you know we do not get a good vibe from them from day dot and like um so you know by this point they are like the bad guys in this situation and so when this shit starts like kicking off it's it's so good (laughs) yeah and you know at this point it just becomes a lot of like she's running around biting people and they're dying and then coming back to life yeah and at this point the military shows up because they've tracked them down and they basically (laughs) just you know shoot them all with the freeze bullets yeah and yeah and but this is the point though where kurt's dad is like i'm so glad you're safe like i was so worried that you were going to be hurt and you're not yeah because beforehand like um i know obviously you know the fucking his sort of rival is course is british because she's a dickhead um yeah so he sort of like says to like you know (laughs) um british sergeant person or whatever um you know like because she's saying like no fucking kill everyone because you know potential zombie outbreak and he's like no fuck you it's my son kind of thing and like he's like willing to put his career and whatever and even like it to an extent his life because you know it's this kind of like legal shit it's just like government shit um and he's going no fuck you you're not going to touch my fucking son and she's just like, yeah, but no, I'm going to definitely kill him because he's probably infected. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that's that's going to happen. And he's like, no, my son, I love him. Blah, blah. So, like, um, we've kind of seen this sort of this thing of him defending his son and, and wanting what's best for his son. So, you're like, yeah, when it comes out and this sort of stuff, it's like, yeah, dad. And they, they're they all taken back to this military facility and when, you know, Kurt, you know, kind of comes to and starts poking around, um, he finds, uh, I think it's Riverman that he sees first, who is in yeah. like this exoskeleton kind of thing um, with a bit in his mouth because, you know, we've got to keep the kink alive. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everyone loves a gag. Sure. Uh, or at least half of the couples usually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, at this point, uh, Kurt's like, "Wait a second, you're not going to do this to? Oh, Julie's in one of these tubes also, and is going to yep. be thrown into this, you know, exoskeleton device, and she's already got the gag in." Yeah, he's pretending not to be turned on by that. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean. It's sexy, but it's wrong. 
and morally reprehensible, but also a turn on. <laughs> There's a lot of conflict in this film. Yeah. But Kurt, <laughs> like, basically decides he's going to uh, let all the zombies loose, which leads to a bunch of the soldiers getting bitten, and there are just zombies everywhere now. Riverman's yeah. attack and the gang member with a like a telescoping spine head is wandering around <laughs> uh and kurt's like we got to get out of here he's like i can't leave julie also i got bit somewhere in all of this yeah mm -hmm. and so the the kind of conclusion of the movie is the whole place is now on fire it's gonna burn to the ground and kurt and julie go to this big furnace yeah and she's like where are we gonna go and he says where we belong and oh. <laughs> aka i'm going to make sure that you're not ever going to have another boyfriend yeah. i know that we're wrong for each other but <laughs> this is going to be the only relationship you, that either of us ever have again yeah and yeah so they kiss one last time and then they burn alive and the whole place burns down and end of movie yeah it's all very tragic and dramatic and shit yeah all very emo it's this is an emo emo movie um mm -hmm. it is not uh, i was gonna say it's not quite as emo as the crow i was literally thinking this yeah i would say the crow is more goth though yeah you're right like it's yeah, this is like punk emo, whereas The Crow is like emo goth. Yeah, I, I think mm -hmm. that's a good dividing line. And Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's, it, it, you know. It definitely taps into that. And it's not, as I said in the upfront, I don't think this is a good movie. But it's <laughs> short. It's yeah. not super long. No, it's like an hour 40, hour 30, something like that. Like, yeah, it's 90 minutes. Yeah. <clears throat> Pardon me. And more importantly, it has the sexiest zombie in film history. Oh, without a fucking doubt. Like, there's just no contest on anything. <laughs> right. It is. Like, yeah. You say sexy zombie, it's just like, oh, it's Julie from Return of the Living Dead 3. Yeah. Yes, that's what I meant. That's the one. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it, but it's it, truly a great example. Like, sometimes... Uh, you know, we might stretch a little bit between movie and topic, but this is <laughs> a one-to-one -one comparison of, like, here is the awful shit that happens if you are in a bad relationship with someone who is yep. playing a different game than you. Yep. And the next thing you know, you're turning into a zombie with her and having to burn yourself alive. Yeah, basically. It's the whole kind of, like, crash and burn analogy. Right, because you can't just be cool about it and say, like, hey, you know what? This isn't my speed. My relationship speed is more leave it to beaver and not, you yeah. know, <laughs> never mind the bollocks. Here comes the sex zombie. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's uh, it's kind of like um, you know that meme of like the dog in the burning house. It's like I'm fine, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's that I feel. <laughs> uh, all right, look, we've we've teased this enough. There is a story that you came to tell tonight. Oh right, yeah. Well, okay. So I'll start off. So um, I'll start off with one story. So this is sort of in follow up to our. Our last episode, uh, which was sort of like an LGBTQ mm -hmm. kind of um, uh, centric episode with uh, Knife Plus Heart. And this was sent in by listener Sabrina Borman, who is a dear friend of mine. Hi, Sabrina. And um, an avid lis listener of the show. Um, and she wanted to send this in after listening to the last episode. So I'm going to read that out and then I will, I will tell the other story. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. So this is literally her words verbatim. So... So it was 2009 and I was having a coming out party because I realized I was bisexual. I'm actually pansexual, but at the time I didn't know the term. I had a bunch of friends over and we were all crammed in the bedroom watching Jennifer's Body, classic bisexual rap film. Me and this girl, Brandy, snuck off to another room. We were making out. I'd made out with girls before. That was nothing new. But I really thought that we were going to take things further. 
So naturally, my hand started to make its way south and she stopped and she said the words no one wants to hear. She said, I'm only into girls when I'm drunk. Oh. Yeah. Obviously, I respected her stopping us, but man, that stung. And since then, I've been in a long-term relationship with men and have never experienced anything more than with that woman. Still chokes. Yeah. Though, tidbit to that, she is now broken up with said guy. <laughs> and uh, although she is kind of like having a thing with another guy, she's still very open. Um, There's not like a thing. It's like a, you know, she... <clears throat> She's going to have some fun, I feel. This summer's going to be a good one for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it should be. This is, you know, hot back summer. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I feel like I'm also kind of... We, me and her have, have been in very, very similar situations um, to the point where I joke, like, we're tethered, like, from us. Um, and because we also are, like, the same person. Um, so, uh, yeah, I feel like we're, we're both going to have, like, a real good time this summer. <laughs> nice, nice. But yeah, like so, uh, I just wanted to read that out, and I, I don't know if rough. anyone else can. Yeah, I don't know if anyone can else relate. Anyone else, sorry, can relate to anything like that where they've kind of just been like, not only have they sort of been like, oh, okay, we can't go any further, but just like, ah, oh, fuck, you know, like that sort of dr stomach drop, you know, where you've been close to getting with someone or whatever, and then it's just like, wow, that I can't cross that line. Uh, yeah, yeah, that. Uh, I... That sounds like somebody that's repressing a lot of stuff. I, yeah, I would agree. I feel like, I mean, Sabrina's always a very kind of like open person. She's a very kind of like, yeah, she's a very open person. Like she doesn't shy away from shit. Um, whereas I feel like this other person, yeah, she maybe has some issues that she needs to kind of deal with on her own time before she kind of like incorporates anybody else into what she's got going on. Um, and hopefully she has, because this was obviously a good while ago, 2009. So, you know, it's 13 years for personal growth. <laughs> and hopefully she's found some. Yeah. I'm, yeah. If you're forcing yourself to get loaded just so you can, you know, deal with a part of yourself, then you mm. just need to deal with that part of yourself. Yeah, 100%. And let that other person kind of just, you know, do what they need to do or want to do without the kind of burden of whatever it is you've got going on especially i feel like for like your first proper time of like doing something with someone like you know like whether it's like losing your virginity or just exploring your sexuality like you know if you're going sort of to a level beyond where you've been before you know like i feel like mm, you need to kind of be on the same playing field and the same wavelength and and again it's, it's all about that you know we were saying before it's all about communication and just making sure that everyone is on par yeah and you said this was the, the like this was a coming out party right well yeah exactly that sucks even worse of like hey I'm, I'm here to have a good time and quite specifically to fool around with someone of of you know same my, gender yeah of well, my own gender not or, a man right and yeah it's pansexual you know you, you face hot is hot it doesn't really matter what gender you are whether you're gender fluid non-binary trans you know female male she they he they whatever you know like hot is hot so but like you know she like sabrina had only uh been with sort of cis males until that point so she was kind of ready to float that boat in another direction and yeah this person just sort of like had this shut down line of yeah i'm only into girls when i'm drunk which is just you just don't want to hear that it's just like it's... oh great so not only are you not really comfortable with this but you're also drunk and i really don't want to take advantage of that situation it is super bad form on the part of sabrina's would be you know fun time partner in this scenario <laughs> to be like yeah. hey i'm gonna take you away from the party that is all about your you know like accepting your this sexuality that you are yeah. you know brave enough and bold enough to tell us all about and uh -huh. now let me ba make it about me mm. in the middle of this that sucks yeah, I, and not only that, but completely kill your buzz and shut you down, and you think you're kind of getting somewhere, and oh no. Yeah, 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 I, I, yeah. I look, uh, if she absolutely deserves the hot back summer ahead of her. Fuck yeah, she does, and like, yeah, it's um because again, like, it's a very similar thing with me. Like, I'm pansexual, but I've only ever really been with men. Like, I've fooled around with girls, but nothing like too serious, and 
I've like I've been in a relationship my entire fucking adult life and like now I'm just kind of like cool where'd that pussy at you know (laughs) and if I was in this situation I'd be fucking like oh god damn it you know like this is fucking so frustrating and like you know and and especially because like you know I'll say this was a while ago and um Sabrina's 27 so like you know this is 13 years ago she'd have been what like 14 15 maybe and like that would have been so kind of crushing as someone who's you know that young and being open about it and as you say you know kind of having this whole coming out party and um you know and then and then having this like you know it's yeah it's rubbish so Sabrina get yourself some pussy Mm -hmm. well-deserved long-awaited fucking good ass pussy yeah 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 and and everyone else who's wanting some fucking pussy in their lives and hasn't been able to have any for whatever fucking reason go get yourself some consenting pussy absolutely and uh sabrina if you see the spoil sport uh mm-hmm. in, in your walking around time you have every possible. yeah you have it's every possible. right to just smack her right in the face <laughs> don't, don't explain yourself just do it and walk away yeah just like upside the head which is just the funniest um physical assault yeah. to me yeah I mean, <laughs> yeah like it doesn't have to be one of those things where you're like you're you're not gonna send her to the hospital or nothing but just no, no. just let her let her know that she did a fucked up thing yeah well you done fucked up also uh for anyone who doesn't know sabrina is fine and so this chick really missed out just saying yeah 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 talking about hot goth chicks oof hot goth chicks with sabrina there are very few hotter things on earth than yeah. a hot goth chick yeah and sabrina is up there for shows so um yeah uh, <laughs> but uh yeah so cool thank you very much for sharing that story sabrina really really appreciate it yeah, i think that's our thanks. first first listener story that's been sort of like kind of written in yeah. specifically because of an episode kind of thing so that's cool thank nice. you very much yeah thanks very much yeah and um, and, and, and please let us know how the smacking goes <laughs> yeah. um or like you know the lip smacking oh, oh yeah. yeah oh <laughs> oh, yeah we, we that you can just send pictures and we will not share them on the show they will just be for our, our private use just our, our personal wank wank. Uh, yeah exactly like we have shared with you the sexy zombie now yeah return the favor how about a little something for you know daddy <laughs> i'm mommy yeah and no, mommy um, mommy and daddy rec- both need sex <laughs> right for the record uh sabrina is one of my best friends and this is not as creepy as it's possibly sounding to some people mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's fine me and her vibe like this all the time it's totally fine she'll find this hilarious um <laughs> okay cool so is everyone uh is everyone sat down and prepared to be completely fucking grossed out are we ready is this Let, yeah let's do it good? okay so this is my oh god jesus this is my second story so um this is this is a story told by my good friend leash mm-hmm. um who is uh yeah she's a really good friend and um just it doesn't hold back with shit either um and they um they were telling me and, and a few of us were all out for drinks a, a week or two ago um and they were telling us about how they had this friend um who had hooked up with this guy and they had basically they'd been doing a bit of food kind of you know fetish play kind of thing you know yeah and um and i think that they they couldn't find any like lube or something um or they decided i can't remember exactly but they just or they decided that they wanted to use some mayonnaise as lube all right mm-hmm. so they um they use some mayonnaise as lube weird flex but okay um and then i don't know like a day or two later she's in class right she's in like she's like college right she's in the lecture <laughs> and she just starts coming and she doesn't know why but she just starts coming oh wow yeah 
and it's like repeat she has to leave class are you sure it wasn't miracle whip well so she um she just can't stop coming she's just feeling all kinds of goodness inside turns out <clears throat> the mayo went sour uh -huh. and with the inner bacteria that vaginas have maggots cultivated what mm -hmm. yep and so they're wriggling around in there giving her a happy time that's not uh, not such a happy time all right how uh how <laughs> <laughs> How sure are we that this actually happened? This sounds like something that somebody oh, no, made up. Uh, no, 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 a hundred percent. Like Leash would not lie about this shit. Like there's this, yeah, and um, yeah, and it's like it's one of her best friends. Like they're not gonna, they're not gonna say this about their best friend if it's not true because they're just not. They're just not that kind of person. They're not gonna start making stuff up. Like yeah okay and right. i just i had to put my fingers in my ears and just la, 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 i don't want to hear it and um yeah uh yeah because they basically just mm -hmm, came over maggots okay so follow-up question which you may mm -hmm. or may not have the answer to mm -hmm. that i is... probably don't i did not want to know any more information <laughs> yeah it, it, that's but go ahead uh -huh. um did she immediately go to the hospital I mean, I don't know, but I would imagine so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would imagine so. All right. Because that is honestly the part of the story that I want to hear. Oh, well, I tell you what, I will, I will talk to Leash and I will see if they have a follow-up. I will do some detect Because I, because we were out, there was a bunch of us. It was a, a work sort of leaving thing, drinks for someone who was moving branches and uh, so we were all kind of like a little bit tipsy and just having fun and stuff. And then basically they told that story and we were all like, la, 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 no, 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 no. Let's like, we're either going to go get more drinks, go out for a smoke, or we're just going to move the conversation on. Like there wasn't any delving. So what I can, I can see if I can get some more information for next time from Leash and see if they, they have any more info. Yeah. I, I want like, that's horrifying. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but I also kind of want to know the the more like practical aspects of this. Uh -huh. Of like, all right, so how long did it take to clear this up? Was this just like, uh, hey, we're gonna get a, <laughs> you know, some good kind of vacuum like they use at the dentist to suck the well, spit out? I think if anything, possibly a douche. Yeah, yeah. I just, I mean, I, I feel like you've got to, like, what's the follow-up, though? Because you got to make sure you yeah. got everything. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah. I'll find out. I'll find out. I mean... Yeah. And how did she not feel... Like, I understand the orgasm, but how was that the first sign? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I'll find out. I'll do some digging. I did... Honestly, the story was told, and that was enough for me. I did not think to ask any follow-up questions i no, that is the proper response i'm just enough of a weirdo that i'm like whoa, whoa, whoa. let's <laughs> yeah put the brakes on you're gonna have to walk me through this <laughs> i will do i will do some recon and i will i will have something for next episode excellent okay. um <laughs> uh thank you what a wonderful story yeah i'm sorry everyone uh if but you... i feel like if i suffer you have to suffer with me so yeah uh, We've no. given you some good shit this episode. We have to we have to flip it over a little bit. So, if <laughs> you would like to tell one of your stories, one of my stories. Or oh, wait, listeners. Your, your listeners. Oh, yeah. yeah, I see what you're saying. I do. I see what you're doing. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Um, then, <laughs> although I've said enough stories, I feel. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're I think we're done here. Um, I think we're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if but if you listeners would like to uh th throw a story into the ring here it doesn't have to be disgusting but it doesn't no, it hurt doesn't. I, I mean it hurts a little bit <laughs> yeah a little bit um uh, but you should uh reach out to one of us you can do this uh, a couple of different ways I'll, I'll tell you my ways first uh which is you can go to 
uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash dark parade. There you can find me and just message me. You can leave the whole story and, and just say whether or not you want a name used it. You don't have to. The only people no. that will see it are me or Kate. Yeah. Um, you can also hit me up on Twitter at dark parade pod. Um, and, uh, you can also email me at Bo. That's just B O at Legion podcasts.com. Any of those ways, uh, you can very, uh, very quietly, very privately tell any story you like and just, you know, just make it clear what, what you want to share and what you don't want to share. Um, and then, you know, obviously subscribe to dark parade and make sure that you don't use mayonnaise. <laughs> as, as a lube, as a lube. Oh. Uh, I just don't even know I don't I, I'm gonna find out some more information because as I say I was a little bit drunk when I heard this story um I'm gonna find out some more information because I just don't understand I don't understand why that's your go-to like surely spit you you spit first before anything no? right is there not nothing else in the house that <laughs> what about vegetable oil like I mean <laughs> I feel like that's still disgusting. But, I mean, it's yeah. disgusting, but it's not a food product in the same way, you know? No, yeah. And it, it's Maybe just like some moisturizer. It's I, not I, made I out know. of eggs, you know? I mean, yeah. Ugh. All right. Well, uh, where can people reach you if they have further <laughs> questions about this whole bad A's business? Um. Well, uh, you can you can uh, send me a private message on uh, Facebook. It's just my name, Kate Pollock. Um, I do. Have, I've not been on Facebook like itself like very regularly lately, um, but I do still have Messenger. So go ahead and and pop me a, a message if you'd like. Or otherwise, uh, my Instagram handle is K A N J O U thirty seven. So that's like Kanju. Um, don't worry about why um 37 um you can always uh slide into my dms yeah um yeah baby uh and just pop me a message there or whatever you know that's cool um but otherwise yeah just like all the other ways that both said but those are the sort of the two ways that you can mainly reach me and and yeah have at it come at me bro <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um all right well thank you sabrina thank you hellman's i suppose <laughs> yeah thanks leash for that horrific story and and thank you as always kate for making this show um both uh, a funny sexy horrifying ride <laughs> into the apocalypse oh thank you Bo, my my partner in crime yeah uh so we'll be back maybe with a special guest next month yeah, maybe, maybe. We're, we'll yeah. see what's the logistics on the go. Yeah, but we're we're working on it. And uh, yeah, so we'll see you in another month for, for Heart of Horror. In the meantime, um, please stay away from the mayonnaise. That is not, <laughs> that is not a, an acceptable substitute for yeah. natural or unnatural lubrication. A hundred percent. That's uh, our advice free from us to you. And also stay away from zombie chicks. No matter how hot they are, they's bad news. Absolutely. And and yeah. learn to cook dinner for your partner. Fuck yeah. Also caningulus rules. Yeah. Fuck yeah. A hundred percent. All right. A hundred percent. We'll see you <laughs> next month. Bye.